Hey, we're Aaron and Jennifer Smith with Marriage After God. Helping you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. And today we're going to talk about the power of touch in marriage. Welcome to the Marriage After God podcast, where we believe that marriage was meant for more than just happily ever after. I'm Jennifer, also known as Unveiled Wife. And I'm Aaron, also known as Husband Revolution. We have been married for over a decade. And so far, we have four young children. We have been doing marriage ministry online for over seven years through blogging and social media. With the desire to inspire couples to keep God at the center of their marriage, encouraging them to walk in faith every day. We believe the Christian marriage should be an extraordinary one, full of life, love, and power that can only be found by chasing after God. Together. Thank you for joining us on this journey as we chase boldly after God's will for our life together. This is Marriage After God. Well, welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Marriage After God. We're super excited to have you. Yeah, we you, only, You're yeah. looking at me funny, Aaron. <laughs> Why are you looking at me funny? I, I was wondering how, um, if, if everyone knows that you're still pregnant or if they're waiting to hear about the baby, because I don't know I'm if everyone knows pregnant. the exact. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, March 20th is the, yeah. is the due date. Creeping up on us. We're huh? like almost there. <laughs> um, also, so along with the baby coming, uh, we have the end of our season coming. So oh, yeah. um, season three of the Marriage of the God podcast. prepping their hearts? I'm prepping their little hearts. Uh, we'll come back. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have this episode and I think three more episodes yeah. to finish out the it's season. It's actually really great timing, you guys. And um, it was intentional because postpartum's the, the a real deal. And so I need time. Yeah. So we're going to we're gonna take a break during the postpartum season. We'll, and then come, we'll come back, back right before summer starts. Yeah. We're super excited about that. Uh, which always, when we take these breaks, gives you enough time to go back to all the episodes you haven't listened to yet or haven't fully listened or to. Or re-listen to your favorite ones. Or really re-listen to your favorite ones. Yeah. So. Okay. So um, I wanted to, before we get into today's topic, I wanted to start off this episode with um, <laughs> with an encouragement of something that happened. But Aaron, when I mentioned that that's what I wanted to share about, you're like, no, let's just do the whole episode on that. <laughs> so, right. so I'm not going to share it right now. That's what the whole episode's going to be about. So I'll intro it later. Right. Uh, but what we can talk about is, um, so everyone, uh, we've talked about how we were going through, um, what's it called? Uh, my family, 24 ways. Our, our 24 family ways. That's what it is. Our 24 family ways. By Sally and Clay Clarkson. Uh, it's a family devotional and it's, it's 24 weeks long. Uh, we did it twice. The first time we did it, we went, um, we did it in... It was a, a quarter of the time because we just kind of took each, each day was each a, day was a new way. Yeah. And they come with these coloring pages. So it was a really great kind of quick overview of what it was about and gave, gave us time to wrap our heads around it and get familiar with the content. And so that was super fun for the kids. We did that last summer and then kicking off the new kind of school year in September. We're like, let's do the whole week and we'll use right. we'll use the um, what is it? A devotional or a resource? Yeah. We'll use it the way that they wrote it. And Which is every way is a five day process. Uh, process. Yeah. So there, every day there's an, another verse you're reading, another idea, there's another question, but it's all in the same yeah. family way. And we just finished that. Yeah. There's a couple of weeks, weeks we didn't do because of travel or, or different things, right. but we just finished it and it was great. The kids loved it. We loved it. Yeah. And um, we're bringing this up to t just to kind of like recap that we told you we were going through. We gave it as an example to you all on a great way to start doing a mm -hmm. family Bible time. It was a lot of fun. It was, it was really easy. It has a lot of prompts for the parents to, to walk through. It gives you the questions to ask. But Jennifer, what are we doing now? So we finished our family 20, or what is it? Our, our 24 our Family Ways. 24 Family Ways. By Sally and Clay Clarkson. Uh, you should go pick that up on Amazon. Um, but so we're done with that and we love that. But what, what are we doing now? So yeah, there was that question creeping up to the end of that resource that we were like, hey, keep in mind, what are, what are we going to do next? And there's lots of different things that we could have chosen. Yeah. We've done it before where we just like read through yeah. some of the Bible, read just whole chapters. Yeah. I proposed to Aaron, I said, um, why don't we focus on some of the kind of major, uh, Bible stories? Like our kids are still pretty young and they know a lot mm -hmm. of the stories, but just clarifying for them what actually was taking place during those stories and what are the details. And so we'll take a whole week on one story. And what I didn't share with Aaron was, my heart behind it was, and let's focus on how Christ is pictured in, in these stories, which I just thought right. would be a really cool perspective, but I didn't share that part with you for some reason. I just said the Bible story thing really, sh you know, short and brief. And so I started making a list of the different Bible stories 
and I put them up on our chalkboard and you love the idea. And that first day that we started out with uh, yeah, Adam creation and, and Adam and Eve, you're like, and guys, cause you're like, pro, you know, basically laying out what they can expect from how Bible time is going to change for us. And you told the kids, so we're going to dive into these Bible stories, one story a week, but we're going to see how Christ is at the center of each one. And I love that you did that. We were totally like on the same page without even having talked about it. And it's been really good. Elliot's been loving them because he loves learning about these stories. Um, and also all the questions and the digging in and how there's correlations to Christ and, you know, Adam or, you know, these, these stories that we, we just, all know of. Just in simple things like in Genesis, when it says, um, you know, we're going to make them in our image mm -hmm. and get the kids to really like focus in on what like that one word is. Who's yeah. us? Who's, who's the, the, who's talking here about Adam and uh, Elliot's like, oh, it's, it's God and Jesus and the spirit. Yeah. So he got the idea in the beginning. Uh, and just an encouragement for those that are listening. Um, you're probably thinking like, okay, like all of our kids know these stories, but you actually be surprised at the stories that you kind of know, cause you grew up in Sunday school or how, if they don't ever get brought up, your kids aren't going to know them. They're yeah. not going to know the story of Noah's Ark. They're not going to know the story of Jonah and the well. They're not going to know the story of Joseph and Abraham and Isaac and Adam and Eve and creation. We have to do that. Yeah. We have to teach our children these stories and they're not just stories, they're history. Yeah. And my encouragement would be for our sake as, as adults, going back to some of these stories have been encouraging because then we either see things we never saw before or somehow it's re relevant mm -hmm. to something that we're going through that we can apply. That's just an encouragement. Yeah. And it's, it's just getting back into the word of God always and remembering yeah. these powerful t you know testimonies that God's given us of who he is, his plan for redemption mm -hmm. and, and his story, you know, for us. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, before we get into the topic, I just, as usual, we have a free thing for you. Uh, if you haven't taken the marriage prayer challenge yet, uh, we dare you <laughs> take the marriage prayer challenge. It's marriagepraychallenge.com. It, uh, it's a 31 day email series where you're going to get emailed every day with uh, something to pray about um, and a reminder to do it. So you're going to be praying for your husband or your wife every day for the next 30 days, 31 days. And we just want you to jump in. It's almost 50,000 people have now have taken this challenge. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, so if you're not one of those 50,000, I just want to encourage you to go right now. Take a break from the podcast even. Go sign up, marriageprayerchallenge.com. It'll take you like one minute and then come back and finish the episode. All right. So today's topic is on the power of touch. And again, this is something that I, something that happened recently in our marriage that impacted me so much that I told Aaron, I'm going to share about that in the next podcast. And he was like, no, we're doing the whole episode on this. And you're and like, we don't need to do a whole episode. Let's just, <laughs> it's just a little passing idea. And I was like, no, this is actually really important because of how much powerful. value you got out of it. Yeah. So, and you know, we, we understand that sometimes our episodes go uh, quite long. And so we're just going <laughs> to jump in. We're going to dive in and give you the, the, the tips and tricks that you can do right now. We're going to just do them up front. That way, if you don't listen to the whole episode, you're going to walk away with the, like the best tips for touch. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Uh, so what, what's the first tip they can get real quick? I mean, I'm just thinking like when you're passing passing by each other in the kitchen, you both have these tasks on your mind that you're trying to get yeah, done. Yeah. Just give a little, you know, elbow to the gut and let that, let that spouse know that you're there next to them working alongside them. It also them. might even like get them out of your way for a second. Yeah. Like, Cause like, it, yeah, it's like a twofer. Yeah. Uh, another little tip is like when you guys are laying in bed and, and like just, just right before your spouse is falling asleep, just to remind them that you're there and that you love them. Just giving them, you know, a, a wet finger to the ear uh -huh. <laughs> um, um, or like a little like tap on their neck to like yeah. tickle them a little bit. Like Maybe those a, pin kinds, a pinch. Yeah. A pinch. Um, those kinds of things like let your spouse know like, Hey, I know you're just, we're almost falling asleep, but I love you. <laughs> I love you so much. Um, one of my favorite ones is when you're like out on a family excursion and your spouse is wearing a backpack and you're kind of walking, you know, a little bit behind them, just give that backpack a little push to the left or right. And it really throws them off, but it reminds them, Hey, I'm here with it's you. It's almost like a, it gets them to like flip around a little bit and then they could see you, yeah. you know, it's like a, you know, I, the, I, the whole point of touch really is to interrupt what's going on. It's to interrupt <laughs> the day and to say, I love you. <laughs> Everyone's probably listening thinking like, are they serious right now? Um, we are totally playing. Yeah. Uh, we're being playful. These are funny. These are funny ways. Don't, don't actually go by and, and especially if your wife's pregnant, elbow her in the stomach. <laughs> oh, don't do that. Don't do that. No, we're just kidding. No, we, we actually legitimately want to talk about the, the power of, of real loving touch yeah. and what it means and how it works and why God's given us this gift of touch um, and the benefit from 
what we've seen in our own life, something that Jennifer's going to talk about in a second experience that she had with me. And then we're just going to, we're going to talk about that and encourage you, the listener, um, you husband and wife who are in your car or in bed or at home, walking around the house, whatever you're doing, listening to this to just remember, um, to touch more. Yeah. Um, it should be obvious, but it's not. I'd even say evaluate whether, like how long it's been since you've intentionally touched your spouse or, you know, what does that touch look like either throughout the day or in the morning or at night? And Mm -hmm. just, uh, let, let the Lord inspire you today when it comes to touching your spouse. Yeah. And this isn't just for those that they're one of their love languages is physical touch because every human, actually every organism in the world requires touch for that stimulus for healthy growth, um, especially for human beings. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but, um, so this isn't just for those that their love languages, physical touch, every single one of us need to focus on this. And if it's not your natural tendency to do so, then we just got to work a little harder. Yep. Okay. So this is what happened. I was having an off day. I felt run down. I felt tired. Super pregnant. I mean, just physically, I just was not doing well. (laughs) And yeah, just super pregnant. And um, if I I mean, everyone listening right now, you're just thinking about that off day you've had and you're like, okay, I can relate to that. But I felt overwhelmed and I was uh, getting ready to jump in to uh, school time with the kids. And I just had already felt exhausted. And so I was... It was like the morning. We haven't even gotten our routine going yeah, yet. Yeah, nothing had yeah. started yet. And I was already feeling down and I didn't say anything about it. I just was trying to do what I knew I had to do, mm-hmm. right? That saying, do the next right thing. And so I'm in there with the kids. And Aaron, usually you, your routine is after Bible time, you get a cup of coffee and go out to the garage. That's where you work. Um, but you didn't do that. You came in, you came straight to me. You like beeline right for me. And which is not normal for me at you, all. <laughs> no, usually there's just this space where you like, maybe even question like, Hey, how are you? What's going on? You didn't do any of that. You just opened the door, walked over to me, had me stand up and you just wrapped your arms around me and you just held me. And I was like in tears over it. Cause I didn't realize that I even needed that in that moment. And even though I felt like sobbing in that moment. I think I might've even chuckled because it was like so refreshing. It was like that. Oh, okay. That mm-hmm. I see. Well, and also like, why are you doing this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely questioning that. But, um, but it was such a beautiful moment and such a beautiful experience. I had to share it and I wanted to share it with you guys because it really impacted me and nothing needed to be said. Nothing needed to be more than that. It was just, Hey, I, th- like there was so much said in the action itself of, I'm here for you. I love you. Mm-hmm. You can do this. Um, I remember Truett had climbed up on the desk uh, and he was just staring at us, probably wondering like, what are they doing? <laughs> you know, he's still little, he's a year and a half. And all that PDA is going on. He's like, what, what's happening here? <laughs> um, but it really made me feel so good to be embraced. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, I loved that moment. I love that you had a heart that was soft enough to know what I needed and to not let anything distract you from comforting me in that way. Well, and I'll, I'll admit uh, to everyone listening. Um, I'm sure other men are, are much better at this. There's some people that are just naturally prone to like, Oh, like gentleness and comforting and uh, recognizing uh, weaknesses in others and wanting to go love on them. But that is not my natural mm-hmm. position. I'm not naturally gentle. I'm not naturally sensitive. I would say you're more like, I I would feel, I would say that more so you'd like to communicate about it. Like, tell me what the problem is and this is how I I can fix it, which I think a lot of people probably think that way. Um, And then on the negative side, my, I would say my worst way of dealing with this is feeling inconvenienced by someone else's weakness, feeling inconvenienced by your feeling down or, cause all I'm thinking is like, we have this routine. You just got to move forward. And what's happening right now is like stop halting all that. And that's my, I would say that's my natural position, but you have been praying for me for a long time for this. Others have been encouraging me and rebuking me at times Mm -hmm. about my lack of sensitivity, my lack of gentleness. And it's something that I've been praying for myself because I'm a, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, uh, you know, a a leader in my church and it's important in every aspect. And so I've just been praying that God would help me be that way. So this is not a a common event, but that morning, I just felt like, oh, she, she probably just needs a hug. <laughs> yeah, no. And it was perfect. And you know, I just want, I just feel like I have to say this logistically. I know that this can't happen like this in every marriage. Mm-hmm. Uh, schedules are different. That are gone. For People are deployed. Time, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of different types of um, scenarios or situations where in marriage where maybe you can't 
comfort them in that way with the power of touch, but it can be done still in a phone call or a text message or any opportunity where you are together, right? Well, I would say, yeah, the, the physical touch is still important. Yeah. Um, it, I would say more important in those very little amounts of time that you would have. So yeah. if anything, I would just, the encouragement for someone who's not around their spouse often yeah. should make sure they take that focus more seriously. So I, I got a question for you. So I, I, Again, this is for me or for them, for you, Jennifer. Uh, (laughs) It's not normal, but in that moment, I came in and I surprised you by doing something out of the ordinary, Mm -hmm. and just holding you, not trying to give you solutions, not trying to ask you questions, not not what, not feeling annoyed by the inconvenience. I just genuinely came to hug you and hold you and love you. Um, What message does that send to your heart? Yeah, it was really powerful for me. I felt like in that moment there was this um, just first of all rush of peace. I feel like you reminded me that I'm loved that I am cared for, that I'm thought of, that I'm not alone, even though I'm alone with the kids currently trying right. to do school, you are reminding me in a physical way that you're you're there and you're supporting me and you're encouraging me. And that how I'm feeling physically in that moment, yeah, it sucks and it's hard, mm-hmm. but that I can continue on and that, it, that I have to, mm-hmm. <laughs> basically. But it so was it, immediate it, comfort. It sure. gave you something that you didn't have before. Reassurance, yeah. yeah. Uh, how did it make you feel toward me? Was there like a... Anything you thought or like, wow, like this about my husband? Yeah. Well, specifically just that we are on the same team, that you're there for me, even when you can't take over for me. Like you couldn't just take over and do school that day. Like you had work to do. You needed Mm -hmm. to go get to it. Um, But that you were supporting me in in a in a comforting and encouraging way by letting your presence be known and just that embrace. Did it make you because. You've seen plenty of times in the past my annoyance, my dissatisfaction with a scenario like this. Mm-hmm. Did it make you uh, feel more confident in my love for you to see the opposite of that? Oh, totally. Like, it, it really affirmed me. And, and to think that you stopped your routine, you stopped your day, you stopped what was habitual of mm-hmm. going out to go to work for me, like that was super thoughtful. And so it, it was an immediate affirmation of this man loves me and cares for me and wants me to be okay today. And that it did that, like my perspective, mm-hmm. my attitude, everything kind of just shifted in a more positive direction. And I was able to get through that time with the kids in a much better way. And I remember it drastically changed your perspective of the day. I was gonna say my countenance. Your countenance. Even. Um, by the end of the day, like I feel like you were more accomplished at the end of the day. Like you had the house clean, you had the, yeah. like, er, like you felt like a winner. Yeah. Like everything was done that you probably were in the morning thinking none of this is getting done today. <laughs> yeah. And it feels so weird talking about it because in, in this way, cause I feel like we're sharing like in depth, in depth, what the impact was, but it was such a small thing. It really was. It was, mm-hmm. it was such a small moment of physical touch that happened in our marriage that really changed the whole day around. And imagine what would happen if that was a more consistent event. Yeah. For both for both of us. For both yeah. of us, yeah. So um, I have a question for you. Okay. <laughs> Are there any standout moments of when I have randomly touched you or that have impacted you? Yeah. The, when I saw this question, I immediately was thinking about the times in the past where we're sitting somewhere, maybe in church or at a friend's house or uh, just out in public, and you'll put your hand on my back mm. and just start tickle rubbing my back or, uh, you know, rub me, rub run your fingers across my hair, the back of my neck, or uh, those little, those little things, even if they're only for like a split second, it instantly makes me feel like, wow, that felt really good. Mm. My wife touching me, wanting to connect with me that way. Um, it also um, gives me this boost of confidence because in public, when you're around people, I, I don't know if other men feel this way, but there's a confidence boost of like my, my wife, my woman loves me <laughs> and like is showing it, mm. isn't afraid to show it. Is uh, It's basically like earlier you asked me what message did it send to my heart, what you did to me. So this would be what message is a couple when they're showing, mm-hmm. you know, physical touch and affection, what message is it sending to others? Well, and it, but the, uh, the message to others sends a message to me. It makes me feel powerful. Mm. makes me feel respected. Mm. Like it's a little thing, but like, Oh, my wife not being afraid to show affection to me in public means that she loves me that much that she's willing to show others that love mm-hmm. pub- publicly. Mm-hmm. And there's a, there was a just confident boost in that. Other times, just like if we're laying in bed and you just you know reach over to to hold me or to play with my hair or to you know r- you know scratch my back or yeah. like little things like that that have been really I'm like oh like 
it immediately makes, makes me feel really close to you. Mm. Like, like, oh, we're together. Yeah. We're on the same page. Because you know what? When you're like, and everyone can relate to this. So when there's like a fight, a disagreement, there, there's, there's conflict in the marriage, the last thing you want to do is touch. And so That's true. usually not touching is, the, is a common signal for distance, mm-hmm. for like we're not on the same page. So that, that reaching across the bed, that reaching across the table, that reaching you know, over to your spouse, getting close, drawing near, is the symbol of unity. Yeah. Is that proof of like, well, we're here together. Like yeah. I, I'm with you, like you're mine. Um, and it's not obligated. It's not like, Hey, I, I, can you scratch my back? Hey, I need a back massage or Hey, can you rub my feet? Like, which is not bad things to ask, but the unprompted, the desire, the actual desire, like I'm going to reach out and put my hand mm-hmm. on my spouse, mm-hmm. um, it, in a gentle way and it, for the purpose of touching them, for the purpose yeah. of knowing them and feeling their, the warmth of their skin. Um, it, it does a lot for that spiritual connection, that unifying nature of being one. Mm -hmm. So when I was thinking about ways that I'm intentional with trying to be, you know, physical with you, um, I wanted to share this uh, just as a tip for anyone listening is um, for me, getting in the car is a trigger because I know I can reach over and hold your hand. Right. Whether you're driving or I'm driving, one of one of our hands is free. Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, I know it's such a simple thing, but just just reaching over and grabbing each other's hands for a couple seconds, even if it's not long lasting mm-hmm. is just really good too. Yeah. Uh, something that just another tip, another trigger when we're out to eat, mm-hmm. I know I'll put my hand on your knee. Yeah. Like when we're close together, like date night or, yeah, or yeah. we'll hold hands under the table, uh, yeah. things that we, that keep us connected. Um, and then another thing I, you know, you bring up these trigger things to remind us of when we can touch and, and where, and, yeah. um, when we're in bed, I'll, Cause often that, like we don't, we're, we're both really hot. So like <laughs> we don't, we don't <laughs> cuddle too often cause it's temperature we get, hot. Yeah. We're temperature <laughs> hot, but like it, it could be easy to f- just get in bed, do your thing, forget. And then you're like rolled over and no touching's happening, no connection. Mm-hmm. Um, but reaching over and like playing with your hair, uh, you know, just, ha- or putting my hand on your shoulder or holding hands with you. Like I love all of that. So <laughs> even though we can't cuddle because we're, we're too like temperature hot. <laughs> uh, More so during pregnancy. I'd yeah. Say. <laughs> Uh, but I'm, I'm just a hot sleeper. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's hard for me to just want to yeah. cuddle for hours. <laughs> <I'll be sweaty. laughs> um, but that doesn't mean there's not ways that we can connect. And yeah. Would you say that there's any ways that I've failed in this area? I just want to be honest with oh, that's people. That's a big question to ask. I know. Um, well, of course we, we both failed, um, in this area because selfishness creeps in and we're selfish and usually it plays out and well, I'm not getting what I want. I'm not getting what I deserve. So I'm not going to give mm-hmm. what they deserve, what they want or what they think they deserve until I get mine. And we, mm-hmm. we do that to each other and we have in the past. So we've gotten way better at it. Um, I would say uh, we're talking about just non-sexual touch yeah. right now. Um, I mean, sexual touch is so important. And we're going to talk about that a little bit, but well, and just on this side note, uh, any sort of physical touch will not just lead to sexual intimacy, but definitely cultivates that environment where well, you not, want more not negative physical touch. We're right. talking about like, like actual intentional positive, positive touch. Affirm- affirmative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I would say just over the years, and this is something that God's been growing us both in is sexual touch, yeah. like uh, initiating, mm-hmm. reaching out and saying, Hey, I want to be with you. I want, I want to experience this time with you. Um, but that's something that we've been both growing in. So yeah, something that um, is required in order to grow in this area is communication. So th- this is just an encouragement to our listeners. If um, they struggle with, oh, I wish my spouse would touch me and they're not and not wanting that bitterness to grow, you got to tell them, you got to tell mm-hmm. them how it makes you feel or that you want to be encouraged in your relationships that you want to have more, you know, like, wouldn't you say that that's really important oh, yeah. to be able to talk about it? Yeah, not just... Uh, cause we, we sometimes get into this mode of if I say something, then it's going to devalue the rece- receipt of it. So if I've I, done that before. Don't so do if that. I, if I tell my wife what I want and then she does it, then it's devaluing it. So it's almost like, no, they just got to know mm. rather than like, I'm going to communicate. Maybe they don't know. Maybe they, maybe they have a way of thinking because of the way they were raised that just totally makes them disregard things that I want yeah. or need. Mm-hmm. Or maybe their mind just hasn't been on it. And by in- bringing that message in a positive way. Like, Hey, I think we like, we've done this before. Hey, I think we need to kiss more or Hey, I think we need to hold hands more or whatever the thing is that would feel you, fill you up. Talk about it in that sense where it's like, let's both 
uh, make a commitment to do this mm-hmm. more, you know? I totally agree. And I, I think, uh, it's just having this desire to, well, we'll talk about the actual, like touch is just so much more than just, it's a good thing to do. Yeah. Um, and so we'll talk about that more. Uh, the Bible talks about touch a lot. Um, Jesus touched people a lot. Mm-hmm. And so we get this idea of, of the savior, the King, the Lord, the, the creator coming to earth himself, God himself coming to earth in the form of man to touch us. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, uh, there's, there's a, a famous painting of God touching Adam's finger, right? There's this idea of, of Jesus coming to earth in, in the flesh is like the ultimate, you know, intimacy act of saying, you know, God's saying, I'm, a, I'm going to go come to touch you mm-hmm. and, and to heal you and to make you, uh, be with me forever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so we get to see this picture and, uh, why don't you read John thirteen five of this super intimate moment that Jesus had with his, his disciples. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. So that was sort of like really simple. And mm-hmm. I just, I, like you said, it's just a really beautiful picture of intimate touch. Right. And it, it's, this story shows us the servanthood of Christ, him, you know, girding his loins, wrapping the towel around his waist, getting on his hands and knees. And everybody was probably quiet. Like, beneath what is his, he going to do? Yeah, beneath his disciples. Mm-hmm. Like he lowered himself even beneath his disciples to wash their feet. Mm-hmm. And then he tells them, go and do likewise. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially, which is go wash each other. Yeah. Go touch each other. Go embrace each other. Go walk in such a way that you guys are unified and do, and do what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Look at, I'm lowering myself as a servant. So go lower yourself as servants for the sake of washing each other Yeah, and, and embracing each other. I wish that the Bible was more descriptive in this you know, situation mm-hmm. because I would love to hear what was going through the disciples mind when Jesus is, you know, getting ready to do this. And while he's doing yeah, it, we only get Peter's response, which is, he's like, he's like, no, 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 don't do it. And yeah. then he's like, unless I do this, you have no part of me. He's like, oh, wash wait, my wait, whole do body. It, do it, do it. <laughs> um, but also like how, how were they impacted by this experience? I want to hear more of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but they walked with Jesus and I'm sure they had even more physical interactions with him mm-hmm. as far as just, arms touching or hugging or shaking hands or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. probably took part in their relationships as they spent that time together. You know, just thinking how, how was this touch different and what message did it send to each one of them about their relationship mm-hmm. with Jesus? Well, and I, I, what I think is awesome is you have the, these, Jesus is called our high priest. Uh, this is just a thought I was having right now. We're talking about this. And the high, and the priests in the old Testament had to do all of these ceremonial washings for mm-hmm. themselves so that they can atone for the sins of everyone else. Mm-hmm. So they first had to wash for themselves. And we learned that Jesus did not have to do this because he was perfect. So we have perfect Jesus already perfectly, like did not need to be washed by any means because he was perfect, getting down to actually touch the dirt mm-hmm. of his brothers, of these of his disciples. And also that what's how powerful it is because God's created us in such a physical way to need touch. Well, he designed our bodies with the ability to receive it, right? Like we have nerve endings and we can feel, and And I just think that's fascinating. Yeah. We have this perfect God in human flesh touching Mm -hmm. other men's feet and, and touching the the flesh of others. And so there's a physiological response happening, Mm -hmm. a spiritual response happening, Mm -hmm. emotional response happening. All of these things are happening at the same time with the King of the universe, but we get to experience that in little ways and everyday life with our spouse and with others. Cause mm-hmm. this, this physical touch thing shouldn't just end at like, Oh, I'm not a very touchy person and I'll try and touch my wife more, <laughs> but I don't touch others. Like the Bible tells us to embrace each other. Mm-hmm. Like to, and how, how important touch is just gentle, loving touch mm-hmm. in everyday life. It actually has a physiological healthy response in the body mm-hmm. that helps us with many things, but spiritually, it reminds us that we're close yeah, and that we're together and that we're unified and that we care. Which is so important in marriage, right? Uh, <laughs> infinitely mean, important. <laughs> infinitely. Um, do you remember the time that I washed your feet when you came home from Brazil? We I were, do. So we didn't have, this is pre-kids. Um, my probably feet were pretty dirty. <laughs> second year of marriage, I want to say. We were living in Florida at the time mm-hmm. and I had a job. I was working at a preschool and you felt uh, encouraged to go to Brazil. Mm -hmm. We were missionaries. Um, I just happened to have a job to support us while we were working in Florida. But um, 
We were working for an organization that was preparing a trip to go to Brazil. I think it was for two weeks, three weeks. It was two weeks on the Amazon River. It was pretty awesome. (laughs) And so you went and I missed you like crazy. Um, But I had been reading this passage about Jesus washing his disciples' feet. And I just felt so encouraged when you got home, which I think was like, yeah, I think it was like three o'clock in the morning. It was late at night, yeah. Yeah. Or early in the morning. It was like the middle of the sleep hours. And, um, and I remember you came home and, um, you went to go take a shower and I'm like, take a bath and let me wash your feet. <laughs> I yeah. Do you remember this? I do. Um, and I remember, I mean, two years in our marriage where we were all, already starting to experience some of those hardships. those hardships and relational struggles. And, um, it wasn't as bad as it was later on in our marriage, but it was already there. And, mm-hmm. but it was events like this, which I think, helped elongate our, <laughs> our process of not falling apart sooner. Yeah. Um, those little bits of surrender that those acts of like, well, we don't know what to do. We're going to try this. Like, yeah. so you're, you're praying and you see this and you're like, well, I'm going to try and walk in this. You tell God, Jesus says to do this. And I'm, my husband's going to go home. I'm going to wash his feet. When I remember specifically thinking like, I wanted to feel close to you. I wanted to send that message to you that, Hey, I'm your wife. I'm your helper. And I want to do it. Jesus did and mm-hmm. love you in that way. And I saw this, what Jesus did as a very intimate thing. And so I, I just told myself, I'm going to have the courage and just ask him if I could wash his feet. <laughs> and I remember it made me feel really close to you. It Aww. made me feel really loved, made me feel really honored. Um, it also, like, it just surprised me. It was a surprising yeah. thing. I was like, wait, what? Uh, it was a very impactful moment for us. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually, it was so impactful. We, we actually put that challenge in our 30 day devotionals for husbands and wives mm-hmm. for them to wash each other's feet. <laughs> so... Well, while we're talking about Jesus, um, you know, my mind's always, I feel like I'm always going back to marriage after God, but if you haven't gotten a chance to read it, you guys should definitely get a copy. It's the book that Aaron and I came out with last year. Um, but there's a section of, of, um, we're talking about how a marriage after God is intimate Mm -hmm. and it talks about Jesus. And I just wanted to read it really quick. It's on page 65. If you do have the book, a marriage after God relentlessly pursues and embraces intimacy with each other and with God. Our greatest example of this level of intimacy is, of course, Jesus. He put his hands on people who no one else would dare to touch. And there's a reference there to Luke 5, 13. He reached down and held a dying little girl's hand, giving her life again. Mark 5, 41. He broke cultural taboos to talk to people. John 4, 9. And he wept over the death of his close friend, John eleven thirty five. That's our savior. He embraced intimacy. If we are not intimate with God, we cannot be intimate with other people. We cannot weep with those who weep or mourn with those who mourn or laugh with those who laugh. We must look to the example of Christ and be willing to embrace intimacy with God and in our marriage. And I was just brought to remembrance of that section of the book because of how intimate Jesus was, that he was willing to do all those things. When I think about him holding that little girl's hand and it's like, no matter what hardships we face in marriage, we can think to his example and go, I can Mm. reach over and hold my spouse's hand. Yeah. You know? Well, and I think of the example of Christ touching like the lepers and the sick and the bleeding and the, the, the things that a priest wasn't allowed to touch. Otherwise it would make him unclean. Jesus was willing to touch unclean people. Because in reality, all are unclean. Mm-hmm. And so he's, he's touching these lepers. He's touching these, these sick. He's touching these blind, these people that were outcasts that desired to be healed, desired to be known, to be, desired to be reconciled to the community. Um, and it's kind of like this picture in our marriage. Like, are we only going to touch when everything's perfectly right? Or are we going to, in the midst of our pain and our hurt and our ugly and our, you know, smelly and in our dirty times, are we going to touch? Mm-hmm. Are we going to embrace? Are we going to hold? Are we going to reach out our hands mm-hmm. and, and draw our spouse closer to us? Um, because even though often in our vows we say, you know, for better or for worse, it's often just for the better. <laughs> You know, and when it's in the worst, it's like, well, I don't have the energy right now or I, until you change or unless this happens, when it's those times that it's the most necessary. Jesus said it this way. He said, I didn't come for the healthy. I came for the sick. And I would even say most impactful. Like when you know you're either at odds with each other or there's tension or there's hardship. Or you don't deserve it. Or you don't (laughs) deserve it. And that, that, and your spouse reaches across the table and touches you in that way. Oh my goodness. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. It's impactful. And I think that that's exactly what maybe one. Maybe a lot needed here today. I mean, I just feel like that was really encouraging, Aaron, even to me. Well, it, and it, it's encouraging to me. It's something that I have to continue to be to remember. Um, you were you were having a hard time today, and I 
my, my flesh is like, get up, Jen. <laughs> well, no, it's like, I don't know if I can handle you having a hard time again today mm. because I mean, which is totally my selfish flesh because I'm not experiencing what you're experiencing. Mm-hmm. So it's hard for me to just empathize right away. Mm-hmm. But when you walk in the spirit, so my choice to be like, you know, like I'm going to understand my wife right now. I'm going to walk in an understanding way as the word tells me to do. I can realize like, this is a hard season for you and I'm going to have this hard season with you. And mm-hmm. so just go and hug you and hold you and, and, and tickle me with your beard, which tickle, didn't help. Be a little, be no, a little, <laughs> funny, funny touching is good too. You sometimes. were being <laughs> playful. It was really sweet. And um, again, I do appreciate that you, you came to my level and you saw me where I was at and you had compassion on me. Right. And for the husbands out there who are similar to me, uh, go against your flesh and walk in the spirit and, and do, and do this for your wife. Uh, you to be honest, some of you men that are listening are probably thinking like, man, I don't ever do that. Mm. You know what? You know, impactful. She'll probably not know what to do. <laughs> and like, that's you'll, probably why she'll laugh. <laughs> you'll go and you'll try and like draw her close to you and you're going to feel super awkward and, uh, and she's going to like tense up and you're going to pull <laughs> her closer and you're just going to say, Hey, I know it's kind of weird, but I just want to hug you. <laughs> and then you know what's going to happen? She's going to realize it's real. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll probably feel her melt. Mm. <laughs> and uh, so don't be afraid to do it the first time. It gets easier. And ask the Lord to help you do it too. Ask mm. the Lord to help you physically encourage your spouse with that physical touch, with the, the gentle, the loving, the caring, the caress, the, just that softness. It's good. So we've said it a couple of times, but just this idea that physical, physical touch sends a message to your spouse. And um, there was just a, a, kind of handful of ways that I was wanting to share with you guys about what those messages might look like. So this isn't like, you know, a hundred percent perfect. It's just, no, it's just some a, encouragement. <laughs> when, when you do this, it, it kind of sends these messages. Embracing each other says, I trust you and I need you in my life. A comforting hug says, I'm here for you. A kiss says, you're mine and I love you. Holding hands lets your spouse know you like them and you like spending time with them. Tickle rubs, massages, running your fingers through their hair says, I want to make you feel good. And most times lets them know that you desire even more physical touch. It's true. And for those that are afraid of that last part, if I do this, then it's going to make them want more. I think that's something that should be prayed through Mm. in your heart of like, you're avoiding touching your spouse because you are afraid that that will make them want more from you Mm -hmm. sexually. Mm -hmm. Um, And if that's a fear you have and that's a a negative thought you have, which is something that keeps you from reaching out and touching your spouse, Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something you should pray about uh, that God would change in you. And there's a scripture specifically about this. Real quick, I just have to say, um, there's a flip side to this of when your spouse is giving you physical touch and you don't want it to lead anywhere, that you're not just stewing while they're touching you thinking they better not, they better not. And then the moment it starts leading somewhere that you don't Mm -hmm. want it to go, you're thinking, see, I knew they were just doing it to get that thing. But you know what, you guys, God designed marriage to be physical. Mm -hmm. And it's the pretty much the only confines for biblical, healthy, physical touch. (laughs) Yeah. Like we need to be there for each other in that way. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's a specific reason why you don't want it to be led somewhere, you got to speak up. You got to let them know. Otherwise your heart's just going to wrestle. And there's a loving way. It's like, Hey, I'm really enjoying, you know, you, you reaching out, you touching me, playing with my hair, you rubbing my back. Um, and I know you, you, you might want something more. And I just want to let you know that tonight may not work. And so can we plan it for tomorrow night or can we, yeah. can I reach out to, you know, can I let you know tomorrow or. Yeah. Or the other way is to set aside whatever justification you're rolling around in your head mm-hmm. and go for it and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Oftentimes it, you, you get, get to the end of it and you're like, oh, I'm glad I did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we did that. Or, oh, I needed that. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So why don't you read that? It's first Corinthians seven, three through five. Yeah. And this is, this is a scripture that challenges both husbands and wives on the actual obligation we have to Uh, physical intimacy. Mm -hmm. It says this, the husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights. And we all know what conjugal means. And likewise, the wife to her husband for the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a limited time. I like how, first of all, it says, except perhaps. So it means like, if this is going to happen in the rare occasions of depriving each other, it's going to be by agreement and only for a short period of time. Like, don't let there be long periods of time that yeah. this happens. We That's what almost destroyed our yeah. marriage, yeah. was long periods of time of not... Me avoiding... Yeah. Yeah. Um, that you may devote yourselves to prayer, 
but then come together again so Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So there's a very stark warning of, you know, the temptation that comes from, from avoiding each other sexually. Um, and there's also the command that my body is not my own, it's hers, mm-hmm. and her body is not her own, it's mine, right? Mm-hmm. Which has tons of implications, and we can have another episode about this. Mm-hmm. But just, just as an encouragement, you shouldn't be withholding sexual intimacy from your spouse. If there's a good reason then you need to discuss that and come to an agreement on it. Uh, If there's um, infidelity, which is a good reason to have a break from sexual intimacy. then not just a break. It's a break being prayerful. It's a prayerful break for the purpose of reconciliation, for the purpose of building trust, for the purpose of coming together again stronger than before, if that's where you're at. And so there's, there's a stark command in the word of God that who, whose bodies are ours. Mm -hmm. My my body's not my own. I don't get to just, make decisions for my own body. Yeah. I have a, my, I have a responsibility to my wife mm-hmm. and vice versa. And we shouldn't be using, um, you know, sexual intimacy as a tool and withhold it from each other no or anything like that. We can't, we can't let division and disunity mm-hmm. and that kind of um, heart to seep into the marriage relationship, which is so beautiful. Mm-hmm. The way that God designed um, being married and living in this sacred space of like, there's no other relationship like it on earth. Mm-hmm. I receive from you, Aaron, you receive from me. Um, there's physical closeness, embrace, touch, like there really is nothing like it on earth. And um, to be aware of that and the opportunities that we do have to come together. Mm-hmm. And again, this is just another place where I want to assert that if distance or timing doesn't work because of work schedules or, or something, you know, that is keeping Mm -hmm. circumstances that are keeping you guys from being physically close, that you're affirming one another with your words. Words are really powerful. Mm -hmm. And as much as this whole episode is about touch, um, you need to be affirming to each other and encouraging each other. Like we can't be together right now, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to make this a priority as soon as I see you. Right. Yep. And I want to talk about some of the the way God designed us and created us to, for touch, for that human connection, not just verbal, but actual physical. Um, and there's a story that we've been told from friends of ours that have adopted in China. And they went to China and they walked into the orphanage and it was silent. Like and there's, there's babies. There's babies everywhere, but it's silent. No, no crying. No, like you would, what you would imagine in a room full of, you know, lonely babies. They said it felt eerie. It was, well, it's wrong. Mm. And this has actually been researched uh, by a lot of people. There's several... Um, um, orphanage systems all around the world that this is kind of the case where the babies aren't touched, they're not held, they're not hugged, they're not coddled, none of that stuff. And the babies very quickly learn that they're not going to be comforted, so they don't cry. They need it. They want to be comforted, but there's no nest. The, the only way they can communicate does nothing, so they don't communicate. Mm. And it actually stunts their their neurological growth. It stunts their physical growth. It stunts a lot of things mm. in them just because they're not being touched. Um, I remember hearing a story a while ago of, um, of an old man. He was single. His wife died years prior and he wanted to find something to do with his life. And so he started going to the NICU at his local hospital just to hold the babies. Mm. He would go in there and he'd sit in a rocking chair and he'd hold babies that didn't have families or that they were sick or whatever it was. And he would just hold them for hours rock them, sing to him, talk to him. And, and so he had this ministry of going and just holding babies, which is amazing. And Beautiful. I think when he gets to heaven one day, God's going to like hug him yeah. for doing that. Um, human touch is fundamental to our communication, to our bonding, to our physical health. There's been tons of research on how physical touch on even little amounts of levels, uh, it brings healing to your body, physical healing. Like it helps you with your immune system, helps you with your, your um, neurological um, development. Um, what human touch does is there's a chemical that God's put in our bodies called oxytocin. Mm-hmm. And it's released during sex. It's released during uh, physical, For, uh, hugs. It's actually released during breastfeeding while a mom is bonding with her baby. Yeah, it's, they, it's called the bonding drug. Mm-hmm. Um, wh- when you have an organ or orgasm in, during sex and oxytocin is released in both of your bodies, it actually causes you to physically, emotionally, mentally bond closer mm-hmm. with your spouse, which is also why it's prohibited to be having sexual relationships outside of your marriage mm-hmm. because you're bonding in this way with other human beings that you're not married to. And this is, this should be only happening within a context of marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, but that oxytocin release, that hormone is actually so good for so many things. 
it, 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 it relieves stress. Yeah. It's like, it, it combats, um, what, what's the stress hormone? It's uh, cortisol. Mm -hmm. it, it combats that. So you have too much of that in your body and you have all this stress and oxytocin being released through a hug, through a kiss, through an orgasm, through the, these things that are, that release oxytocin in your body. And then boom, you're actually helping your body do what God made your body to do, mm -hmm. which makes it even stronger, healthier, um, more excited, more fit, um, uh, less sad, right? It helps yeah. with depression. It helps with all these things. And that's, these are all just the, just the biological function of touch in your, in your life. Um, why it's so important. So again, like I said in the beginning, regardless if your love language is physical touch, every human being on the planet needs physical touch for healthy growth, yeah. healthy living. So you get the, you get to have access to this on a daily basis with your spouse. Think about how much more joyful and secure and confident and happy you'll be if physical touch is more consistent, like mm -hmm. healthy, loving, gentle, physical touch, mm -hmm. you know, a caress here, a hand holding there, a kiss, a hug, caressing the neck, you know, touching the ear, playing with the hair, all of these things, you know, that are so good for us and make you have to be so close and it releases all these good things in your body. And it actually, it's a spiritual thing. It's an emotional thing. It's a physical thing. That's really good. Um, so often I think that as humans, we become um, contingent on the other person in the marriage right. to step up and do something. Transactional. And, yeah. And so I think it's important to speak to that for just a moment, Erin, and maybe you can share on this, but um, just, just as an encouragement to those listening that we shouldn't be waiting to initiate, waiting to insert ourselves and, and be, mm -hmm. be physical um, for our spouse to do it first or to sh t take that first step or mm -hmm. especially if there has been distance or time between, uh, you know, a, a season of no physical touch. Right. Um, what would you say to encourage them? Um, well, I, I first want to talk to those that like maybe I'm imagining a, a husband who has a hard heart. There's something, you know, whatever they're, wherever they're in their marriage. And like, as we talked about earlier, touch is the last thing they want. Yeah. Um, and I would imagine a wife is afraid to like to reach out and hold their hand because they're going to pull away and reject them. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the couple who they have tried to openly express and communicate that they want more or that they're, they're hurt mm -hmm. because it's not happening and then they get shut down. And so that kind of like what you're saying about the babies crying and not crying in mm -hmm. the orphanages, they've learned to not speak up and to not say anything. Cause they're not going to get it. So that's, that makes me sad. Just thinking about that in marriage. Mm -hmm. So my encouragement to those is to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Even, even if they reject you, mm -hmm. even if you, you lean over and you, you go to, you know, caress your wife's neck and she swats your hand away or you reach over to, you know, put your hand on your husband's shoulder and he shrugs it off. It hurts. I'm not going to pretend that that doesn't hurt. I'm not going to tell you to pretend it doesn't hurt but you can hand that to the Lord and say, Lord, that hurts me, mm -hmm. but I want to love my husband. I want to love my wife. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe it's the next time you're walking by them through the kitchen, you just for a half a second, rub your hand across their, their back. They can't stop you. And they, and wh whether they say a word to you, they're going to think like she touched me. You're sending them a message still. You're sending them a message still. And you do that over and over and over again. You know, they, they look frustrated. So you go up and you get close and say, Hey, I'm praying for you. You just put your hand on their shoulder. They, they look sad. So you say, can I give you a hug? Even if they say no to you, do it, mm -hmm. reach out to touch someone like the song goes, I reach out and <laughs> right. Like go to your spouse and just don't give up. Don't give up doing good for a due season. You will produce a harvest. Mm -hmm. You will reap a reward. Um, and it's, I mean, think about it. It's like what Christ did. Yeah. He reached out and touched a lot of people. Yeah. And so be Christ in your home to your spouse, reach out and touch them, pray for them, put your hand on them, uh, try and grab their, their hand, touch their lower back, put your hand on their shoulder, you know, put your hand on their forearm, whatever it is, just let them know that you want to touch them. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, we hope that this, um, episode encouraged you guys and um, just really brought you to a place where you're evaluating physical touch in your marriage. Mm -hmm. And I would say our, our charge to you would be an encouragement to be the initiator. I know we already mentioned that, but to be the initiator of physical interaction um, in your relationship with your spouse and don't let your flesh, your insecurities or your frustrations get in mm -hmm. the way. Be, be courageous enough to reach out and see how that touch impacts your spouse. 
and ask Christ to give you the, the strength and the courage to do it in a supernatural way with your spouse. All right, Aaron, you want to close us out with prayer? Yeah. Dear Lord, we praise you for the gift of touch. We thank you for the way you created our bodies and gave us the ability to feel and touch. We pray that we would be husbands and wives who use the power of touch to affirm each other in marriage and let one another know we are near. We pray we would have the courage to reach out and hug or hold each other's hand, even when it feels hard to do that or inconvenient. May our marriage be a priority in this way. May our touch remind our spouse that we love them and that we support them. We pray touch would encourage intimacy and closeness like we have never experienced in our marriage before. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you guys. We thank you for listening to this episode. We pray that you would touch more. Uh, and that uh, if you haven't already, would you just take a moment and leave us a, a review? Um, just scroll down to the bottom of your app. Uh, hit a star rating. That's the easiest way to do it. You can just tap a star. Um, or you can leave us a text review. We love those. And I also blesses other people when they're coming to check out the show for the first time. It also lets iTunes and other podcast apps know how to rank our podcast based off of reviews. So we love you all. We thank you. And we pray that God moves mightily in your marriages and draws you closer to him and your spouse and see you next week. Did you enjoy today's show? If you did, it would mean the world to us if you could leave us a review on iTunes. Also, if you're interested, you can find many more encouraging stories and resources at marriageaftergod.com and let us help you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. 